Hello, welcome back to Simple or Difficult. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can take this section from looking like this to looking like this. All right, so it might surprise you to know that this image took me less than five minutes to create, and I'll be showing you how to do just that. In today's video, we'll be doing bulk of the work in Photoshop. But first, I want to show you the best way to export your file for this exercise. Because in my humble opinion, very humble opinion, exporting your files right is the first step to getting a satisfying and rich graphics. Now, there are various ways you can export files in Revit. You can export to PDF, you can export to CAD files, you can export to 3D files, and you can also export to images. All right, so for this exercise, we are going to export to image. PDF is good, but in my experience, PDF doesn't give the best outcome in terms of graphics. Okay, so let's just export to image. All right, so if you have your own file you want to do this to, like if you have, you have your own Revit file or whatever that you want to export, so you can follow along. But if you don't have, you can download this project file, this image I'm about to export. Now I'm going to put the link in the description. Okay, so just go there, click on it. Okay, it's for free. You can download it for free. So click on it and then make sure you download it so you can follow along with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and export this to an image. So... First thing you need to do is click on file, okay? Make sure you have the view you want to export open, just like I have opened this one. Okay, so you click on files, see export, you click on export, okay? You don't have to click on it. So once you hover around it, it will just roll out. They just come out by the side like that. So you see this small arrow here, just keep your mouse on top of it, it take you down and then come to image, click on image, all right? So this dialog box is out. This is where we're going to set our setups. All right, we're going to leave this in as it is. Everything on this side, we're going to leave as they are. All right, so I'm going to change this thing to zoom to, and I'm going to change this to 100, all right? I'm going to change this to lose less, this other one, lose less, and this, I'm going to take it to the highest, which is 600, all right? We need it to be very crisp, very, very sharp, the graphics. So we're going to click OK. It will normally take a little bit of time for it to, you know, process. Now it is done. All right, so let's go and see the file we just exported, okay? This is that file over here. You see how sharp it is, you see? I'm still zooming in and it's still clearing up. Okay, that's why I like to export to, you know, an image. If you export to PDF, it will be sharp here, but when you import it into Photoshop, it blows the line out a little bit, which I do not like at all, okay? And when you look at this, this file size, you can see it's still 3MB. It's not that much, but... See the dimensions, huge. So let's open Photoshop and, you know, do the bulk of the work that I talked about. <laughs> All right, so we have opened Photoshop. What I actually did was I opened Photoshop and I created a canvas, an A3 canvas, okay? All right, if you don't know how to do that, just control N on your keyboard, then you select, go to print, you see A3, all right? See A3 over here, click on the landscape mode, you know, leave everything the way they are and then hit OK. Okay, you can rename it here, but you can always rename it later. So just create and everything will just come out. All right. So now I want us to bring in the image you just exported. There are various ways you can do that, but the way I like to do it is click on file. Okay, click on place embedded. All right, see that file over here. You select it. You have to go and find it where you exported your own or where you downloaded, okay, the file I attached in the description. So you place it, all right? And then hit OK. All right. So there are just two things we need to do here. Click on this to change this to, you know, normal layer and not the background. So first thing, we need this thing to be black, all right? So we just have to, let me, first of all, select this one. And then all you need to do is press Control I. That will invert, okay? As you can see, it has already inverted it for you, all right? Then we'll come over here on this layer and also press Control i Everything has turned black and white. But this is too black. I want it to be grayish, you know? This black is still, if this is what you are going for, if, if this is the look you are going for, then well done, you're done, okay? But I want it to be a little bit grayish. So how do we do that? So on this invert, you see this, button over here, you double click it. All you have to do is just reduce the opacity of this, you know, to around say 88 or say 90. I would think I will leave it at 90. You see the difference? See the grayish 
color that it is coming with now. I think I should just make it like 85. 85 is cool. Now hit OK. All right. As you can see, it's looking so nice. But now we have a problem. This background is not respecting our color. <laughs> okay. So how do we solve that? Okay. You just select it. Come over here. Click on this. And then select solid color. All right. So what we need to do is to pick this color over here. And that solves that problem for us. It's what I did there. I just picked this color of this the color of the image we just placed in front. And then when I hit OK now, everything will just blend into each other seamlessly. All right? Okay, so this is done. You can totally stop this video now. You can export your work, you know, and then move on with your life. But there are more you can do to this thing to make it look very, very nice and very, very cool. Okay? And I'm about to show that to you. All right? So let's open that folder. I want us to bring in this texture, this paper texture. All right. We'll bring it in like so. You have to, let me bring it to the top view. All right. Now, so I'm going to take this thing to the edge and I'm going to turn on my transform. You have to ensure that your, your proportional, your proportional link is checked on. Okay, you have to make sure that your proportional link is checked on. Okay, so that when you are scaling, you know, this paper, it is going to scale proportionally. I'm going to put this paper texture also in the description. So go there, everything, all the files you need for this project is already there waiting for you. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, now there are things we need to do to this paper. We First of all, we need to turn it to black and white and we need to reduce the opacity. We are going to change the blend mode as well. So first of all, I'm going to add the hue and saturation adjustment layer, okay? And I'm going to reduce the saturation to zero like so, okay? Now, I don't want this thing to affect every other thing, even though if it affects it, it doesn't really matter. But because I don't want it to affect every other thing, I'm going to create a clipping mask, all right? So it affects only this particular, this particular layer over here. So the first thing I want to do is to reduce the opacity a bit. Okay, it is nice, but I don't, this is not the look I'm going for. I'm going to change it to hard light, all right? And I'm going to reduce the opacity some more, like so. Okay, that's a little bit much. Yeah, let me make it 20. Yeah. All right, I think 15, 15 will, will do just. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, 20. I need it to be a little bit exaggerated. All right, so you can see this paper texture is beginning to add some character to what it is we're doing here. All right, so now I want to add more character to this thing. So I'm going to add like trees. All right, I, you don't even need to go and start creating brushes. Okay, if you have three brushes, it's still cool. You can use it. I'm going to show you the trees you already have you know, in your system, in your Photoshop already. Okay, just click and hold this um, rectangle tool, okay? And then go down to custom shape tool and then leave it. Then come over here, drop it down. You see leaf trees and then you select this first one. This is the one we're going to be using. All right. So I want to change this thing to white. I have to change the fill to white and then this to none, the strokes to none. All right. So I am going to hold on shift the shift button and I'm going to draw the tree like so. Just like that. Okay. We have our tree. Can be heavy at times. So I need to move it over here. And I want to activate the, the transform so I can flip it like so. Now I want to reduce the opacity. Take it down. Like that. I think I need to take it down some more. Take it down. Way, 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 way down. All right. So I, I want to scale it down a bit. 
Okay, you don't have to hold shift now because this is already on. If it is not on, then you can hold shift. All right, so I'm going to take it down a bit, like so. I'm going to leave this one over here. Yeah. Wonder why it is hanging like that. Yeah. So I'm going to just duplicate it. this one over here like so and I want to have like a very big one too at the top over here so I'm going to select it I'm going to make it big make it very big Like so. All right, so I think this one has to be a little bit smaller. one too. I want to flip this horizontally. Okay, so now we have, let me select this and move it in a little bit. This. Move it in a little bit. I think I have to even reduce this one even more. Okay. But all of them should be five. So now I just have to make sure that this tree is not showing inside this house and to do that is very simple i'm just going to trace out the building parts that is being that is that this tree is showing inside okay so just highlight it like so using the marquee selection oh you have to make sure that this is checked on so you can add to your selections all right So just like that. No, no. Yeah, this is it. So I'm going to use hold and alt and click on this. Okay. That hides it for you. As you can see, we are no longer seeing that stuff. All right. So yeah, let me see this. Yeah. So we need to crop this part out too. Very simple with the marquee selection too. Just highlight the part that is... Okay, hold out and then click on this. That solves it for you. All right. So we have to do the same thing over here too. Select it and um, just like that. This. this okay yeah so i think this is it yeah. 
Okay, that's it. So hold on Alt and then click that. All right, so the next one we're going to do is this. Mind you, we have this other part of the building coming out there. And then we have our reinforced concrete pergola. So, yeah. This, so alt. And then, so we have our buildings and everything. All right. So now you can now go ahead and add your logo wherever you want it to be. Or if this is meant to be in your, if this is meant to be in your, or what do you call it? Your portfolio. You can go and export this and put it in your portfolio. But then I have to do this. Okay. As you can see, just hit OK and then set it where I want it to be. All right. So that's how you do this. All right. You export from Revit. To recap, you export from Revit. Then you bring it into here and invert all your layers and it will give you the opposite of the color. All right. So you can stop there. You can export, but you can actually as well, you know, reduce the blackness of your color. The blackness. You can reduce the blackness of the inversion, okay, with with this certain icon over here. And then you can now put a color fill. You don't even need this. Put a color fill above and then match the color to your, to the color, whatever color the image you just imported is. All right. So after doing that, you can now do more things to make it look artistic. All right. So when you're done with that, that's basically it. All right. So. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Okay? And not only subscribing, ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future tutorials. All right? Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.